Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome and or welcome back to my channel. So, um, let's just start off with addressing the elephant in the room. Um, guys, I know, I feel like most of the time when people do sit down videos, they have their hair, their makeup done, they look all cute and snazzy. However, that is not me. I literally just got out of the shower. My hair is still soaking wet. Um, but I wanted this to be like, you know, like, imagine it like this. We're besties, we're sitting here, we're just chatting. I don't fucking know. That's the vibe right here. Um, honestly, the whole vibe of my channel, I always show up looking like a hot mess. So if you're new, this is truthfully normal. So, I literally have on a crew neck. Listen to me, I'm out of breath right now. <laughs> I literally have on a crew neck though. I have on the sweatpants and I do have a little blanket. Um, just to also set the vibe even more outside it is so rainy and gloomy out it's just one of those days it's honestly the perfect day just to like stay inside get computer work done all that type of stuff and that's what i'm doing so um why you guys clicked on the video not because any of that i'm going to be telling you guys how i was able to buy a house at 19 years old um this is not clickbait by the way i'm currently 19 years old i bought this house this year i actually bought it in i bought it late february but i actually like moved in got possession of it early march so little context 2022 by the way in case you're watching this in the future starting out how i bought a house um so if you guys don't know or haven't been following me for a bit i do have a boyfriend scott that's who i own this house with we bought it together so i know a lot of people also are like oh my god you were married you bought a house together yes yes we did uh, not only we already lived together before and we both are very much so into investing so this is kind of like a form of investment for us um although we're living in it too it is like our home however we bought this with the intention that we're gonna sell in roughly two years so we've been doing renovations on the house and kind of like flipping it um but that doesn't really pertain to this just so you know i did not buy this house alone so that is something to kind of factor in however I don't think it's unattainable to buy them alone. I don't know if I would have if I was alone, but like logistically I could still afford this place if it was just me. Getting to kind of like the first step, if you were wanting to buy a home, you've got that like set straight, you already know what you want to do, go ahead, you're going to need to get pre-approved for a loan. So how I did this, um, like I said, I didn't really know. I never really known anyone, like my parents never bought a home, anything like that. So I was just kind of like literally Googling everything. Um, and I was like, okay, get pre-approved. Like that's the step here. Um, so I literally typed into Google best like place to get first time home buyer loan, like some shit like that. Popped up a thing for Nerd Wallet, and it said like NASB, which is North American Savings Bank, was like the number one. Um, so that's who I ended up going through. Not gonna lie, I don't necessarily recommend them. I didn't have a horrible experience. I also just didn't have the best. They kind of like, the lender that I got, um, the communication wasn't too good. And whenever I ended up getting like my real estate agent, he kind of like wouldn't answer things like very timely. And you know, whenever you're putting in offers for a house, stuff like that, like it's very like, people gotta be on top of it with that because it could end up getting passed up, you know, and like getting another offer or i don't know it gets really really hectic i'm not gonna lie to you guys this is a very stressful process and i feel like i got it pretty easy compared to a lot of people um but back to what i was saying so you need to get pre-approved literally you can do a local bank i would probably recommend that more so the place i got their states away so we couldn't even it just it made you know communication harder different time zones all of that type of shit so that's something i would do a little bit different but get a bank get pre-approved um with that you'll have to fill out a bunch of information if you're buying the house like just by yourself you need to like pull out a bunch of like tax forms like w-2 shit like that um you gotta prove your income all this type of stuff so once you get pre-approved i'm not gonna lie guys that's the easy part getting pre-approved i thought that was gonna be like hard but it's not it's the easy part so they pre-approve you based off like your income and other stuff uh you have to also put like your debt ratio so if you have student loans stuff like that gets factored into it um, so you put that all in, you know, the little thing, they pre-approve you for X amount and then that's when you pretty much start looking at home. So then it kind of gets more to the fun part, you know, you're looking on Zillow, like, is it not Trillo? I don't fucking know. Trulia, something like that. There's like so many different apps, you know, like the basic ones. Um, and you want to find a real estate agent. So I was able to find my agent. I think it was like, I don't know, one of those places like Zillow or something like that connected me with an agent and actually I got connected with this one agent first. We set up a showing for a house and he just kind of, I don't know, he didn't necessarily fit my vibe at all. Like 
it didn't something just didn't feel right and once you're doing that and like putting in the request to see these house showings you will get contacted by so many agents like honestly my phone was blowing up it still does at times like i'll literally get emails from people and it has been months since we got this house so a little heads up on that um but yeah i ended up getting contacted by this one i didn't understand this process i was like oh, okay like he contacted me first now that just means i'm assigned to him we set up a showing and then another one contacted me and i kind of like i immediately i felt like there was like a vibe and i was just like okay like i feel comfortable with this person the way that they talked it was less official and more just like kind of like me and you like bestie vibes you know it just felt more like comfortable and safe so that's what i knew i really wanted because i had never done this before i was like oh my god what is this um so i ended up canceling the showing with the first guy and ended up scheduling all of them with the second guy and his name is Brandon, by the way. I'll put his information down below. Literally, I could not recommend him more. Um, Scott, blah, blah, blah. Scott and I already talked about this. After we go to sell this house, we're gonna have him be our seller, obviously, if he like is up to it. But we're gonna use him from here on out. We just we had such a great experience with him, and he truly like went above and beyond. So that's one big thing that I think was so like important. And honestly, I just got so lucky on is finding an agent that genuinely like will help you understand things if you're like especially a first time home buyer with this that they're not going to get annoyed with you and they can explain things really thoroughly and they'll kind of just like hold your hand all throughout the whole entire journey so i got so lucky with that um once again if you guys are in the columbus area um i'll go ahead and put the information down below i highly recommend him he was absolutely amazing another thing to note i did not know this upon like at first i was like do i have to get a real estate agent because i was like i don't know like do we have to pay the agents and i was like how much are they like i don't know if we can afford that i was just like yeah stressing about everything as you do um well as i do at least but something to note you as the buyer you do not pay the agent the seller does so it comes out there's like a certain commission that ends up coming out whenever the seller like sells the home so the agents whether it's the seller's agent and the buyer's agent then they like split like x amount of commission so basically the only thing that you actually have to pay whenever you are the buyer from your agent you have to pay like i don't know a little chunk of money and like the filing stuff or whatever like agency or some shit like that they go through it's nothing crazy it's maybe like a thousand dollars or something but when you're saying a thousand dollars that's that's literally nothing when you're talking about buying a whole ass house that's like a penny in real terms or nickel dime you know what i mean um it's 100 percent worth it though it was yeah it was absolutely amazing so that's something you know get a good agent and that's when you kind of get to the fun process you start booking the appointments you start touring the homes um so a lot of people this can go on for quite some time and it can be super stressful we did get really really lucky with this so what we did just because our work schedule was kind of hectic we booked four showings within one day and then we kind of went through all of those you know i was like recording everything that's another big tip record everything like even if you need to like text like make a little notes thing give in little details like what you like about the house stare at everything pick at this you guys most of the time how this happens you literally go in this house you show it you put an offer in and you will not probably go in that house again until you own it that's how it was for us so you guys observe every single little thing and then once you do that we kept touring on so we toured those four and then we got to the fourth one and really none of them were like yeah none of them were really sticking it wasn't like oh like eh. and then the our real estate agent he was like hey my friend uh, that's another good thing if they've been an agent for a good bit of time they probably you know have networked they know people in the area stuff like that that's really good so that's how it was for our agent he was like hey i have a friend that's um selling this place for someone Do you guys want to go take a look at it we kind of looked at some photos online um and then i was like yeah like why not we're already in town so we ended up coming here the house wasn't even on the market yet it was supposed to go on the market two days like after so it was not even on the market yet and we came in we toured it so this is the fifth house that we toured this was all within one day um yeah we kind of looked around at everything and scott was like i really like it and i wasn't sold on it not gonna lie i was just kind of like eh. but that's me being picky as a female like i wanted everything to be like pretty much just like perfect white and modern already um but with like our price point that wasn't realistic i did still really really like it though i saw the potential that was there so um we went ahead and decided that we wanted to put in an offer um so we put in an offer we did it because the type of market you know like this is something you want to kind of like look up 
and also you want to talk to your agent about like kind of see where the market's at sometimes like i know in history obviously you've been able to get a house like ten thousand dollars under asking price but then the market then in like 2020 you get a house and it's like um can get up to like ten thousand even more like over asking price so just kind of assess your area every area is literally going to be different and kind of like where the property holds its value that is another thing to note you guys do research on the neighborhoods and different stuff like up and coming places where you're buying your home once you're buying this home if let's say you buy it and it's like okay it's a decent neighborhood right now however the school system that's really shitty and you might be like that doesn't matter to me i don't have kids well guess what when you go to sell it they might have kids so you guys need to make sure you're thinking about those things there's a lot of like little tiny details that you need to just like remember in your head um take that into factor and then what the fuck was i saying oh so we put in the offer in on the house so there's also something i didn't know what this was it's called earnest money um my agent was like do you want to guys want to put in earnest money and i was like what is that i was like what the fuck and it was like um, there was a certain amount of money that you put in. It was like, I think it was like 500. I don't know if we said that or the sellers did. I honestly, I don't even remember, but I just know it was like $500. So they're like, do you want to put 500 in? That basically tells the seller that like you're serious about this. And then if we were to back out of the deal, they would just get to keep that $500. And then if they were to back out of the deal, I think we would get it back. So I was kind of like, uh, what the heck? Because at the time that felt scary. I'm like, I don't know these people. They're strangers. I'm just giving them $500. I was like, what? But it ended up really worth it. it basically, it's just kind of like almost like locking your bid in and just telling the sellers like, hey, we're serious here. Um, so we went ahead and did that. And then it was about literally, I think later that day, our agent had given us a call back and then they were like, Hey, someone else put in the offer in the house. However, the sellers like your guys's like information more. So I honestly, I don't know what they were going off. I don't know if it was just like an easier look based on, I don't fucking know. Truthfully, I just, whatever they, um, had an offer and someone had bidded higher than us and then they let us know they were like hey um do you want to match that offer and if so they will choose you and we can start to close on the place or what is it oh go under contract that's the term so we're like uh i like heard called scott and he was like okay yeah let's match it like it really wasn't much more so we went ahead and we matched the other person's offer and then yeah that kind of locked it in we had to do a bit more paperwork um, my biggest tip you guys be really timely you're gonna have to stay on top of the paperwork like literally constantly be checking your phone your email stuff like that so you're signing this stuff so all of this happened um, we then were under contract for the house and that's where other things start to come into play like you really it's so much back and forth between like the agent um, the agent your lender like just everyone with the house and you also have to get things set up like there's an appraisal that you have to get and you have to pay for this um, there's also things like an inspection. You don't have to get the inspection done. However, if you're buying a home, I would. If you're going to be spending like $250,000 on the home, you, you know, you probably want to pay like $700 and get an inspection to make sure nothing is like crazy done or like bad with the house. So we went ahead, we did get an inspection, all that little stuff. Um, you know, it does kind of add in maybe like the appraisal and inspection. I think it came to like maybe like $1,800 for both of those or something, but granted the appraisal you have to get done for the lender and the inspection, it's just something that would be smart from the buyer standpoint, like investment. So the appraisal, in case you guys aren't familiar, what the appraisal is, it basically, they come and like appraise the property. Someone basically kind of looks at it and says, like, is this property worth what they're actually gonna be buying it for? Just to make sure it's a smart like loan from the bank to give you the money, you know, like for the house, that type of thing. Um, so. All of that went good, everything was cleared. Um, yeah, and like I said, there was just like a ton of back and forth, back and forth, because there was almost like little issues, and honestly, I didn't think we were gonna get it, um, because there was like, I don't wanna say issues, but kind of in a sense, just because in the midst of all this, like I said, I had recently graduated high school, so it's not like I had a long term of like work history, and then also Scott and I weren't married, so there's little things that come into play, and also, as we're halfway through the contract process, um, Scott got a raise through work, so then that kind of affected things. So, I don't know, little things like that. All I'm gonna say is that's obviously gonna vary situation to situation, but guys, just like breathe. At the end of the day, it's gonna be okay. Um, once all of that kind of happened, 
yeah, it was just, honestly just a waiting game. It'd be like one moment everything's going good and then my lender would reach out and be like, oh, we need this document and I'd be like, ah. So just stay on top of it. Like I said before, check your messages, check your email, all of that type of stuff. So you are staying on top of it. Um, but then the time passed and well, obviously here I am. I am sitting in our house right now. So like I said, we closed it in March, um, January, February, March, the third. So the third month out of the year, it is now July. So the seventh month. We've been here for a hot minute. Things look very different from whenever we first got it. My my office is an absolute wreck right now. But if you guys are curious to see also what our home looked like whenever we first got it, down on my YouTube channel, I'll link it in the description below. We have an empty house tour. And then, um, like I said, we're in the process of renovating right now. So obviously things are looking different whenever everything is all finished. I'm definitely going to do a finished house tour to show you guys kind of like the before and after all that type of stuff. That is kind of the basic, I guess, like the basic gist of how I was able to buy a home at 19. Um, honestly, the biggest factors come down to it is because like Scott and I bought this home together. So we bought the house together and I feel like people think buying a house is really, really expensive. However, um, do I want to get really transparent on here? Fuck it. Let's get really transparent. Okay. So our house was the house that I am currently sitting in, what we ended up buying it for was 193,000. So we did get it. It's a very, very good and safe neighborhood that we ended up getting it in. Um, I'm not gonna say the exact, like technically a suburb, but generally like we're in the Columbus area, but it is a good safe neighborhood. So we got it for 193,000. That is good for this area. Um, it is a two bathroom, two bedroom house, two bed, two bath. I don't know why I said that backwards, but yeah, there's that. And then, you know, like the full living room, all of that stuff. It's a total of 1200 square foot. And then also the basement is 600 square foot. However, the basement is not finished, but that is a renovation that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be adding on another bedroom and bathroom. So the basement one then turn into the master bedroom and bathroom and then like a walk-in closet down there. Um, so that's a little kind of like heads up kind of up on like our plans for renovation wise, but what we ended up getting the house for and Whenever you're doing the whole like process, you can decide as a first time home buyer, there's a bit more flexibility. Like you can put, I think at first the lender was saying 3% down. I'm sure it can get even lower than that. Um, but we ended up putting 5% down on our house. And I think closing costs, like honestly, I thought we were gonna be putting down like 20,000 cash initially, but it wasn't. I think it was maybe around like 12,000 cash that we had to put down um, for the down payment and like closing costs, which really is not that much um and like i don't know just like what we were thinking honestly i thought it was like gonna be so much more however that doesn't play into fact like all the different costs like i said as to the appraisal and the inspection little tiny things like that so remember take that into factor and once you buy the house if you are buying a house and you're someone like us so we spent a lot of money initially because we've been renovating things for the past four months. We've been like constantly going. We have spent thousands of dollars in paint and just different stuff. Like guys, the cost of things add up, whether it's like all new hardware and stuff like that for like your doors and your cabinets, shit like that. It does like add up really, really fast, even like light fixtures. And without doing all that type of stuff, if you don't like have an actual like full on house before this and you are what scott and i did so we literally we did we skipped the whole running process we went straight from living with my mom and we just bought a house straight from the get-go um it sounds like i said get-go like gecko like the little lizard guy um something was really expensive from the start is getting all new things just like all your dishes your silverware furniture for the whole entire house like furnishing a house is a lot and how expensive furniture is after like miss rona um yeah it's just it's been a lot so even now currently our house isn't fully furnished like we don't really have much like literally this whole wall over here you can see it's literally all just like bare uh we don't have a lot of like furniture and stuff like that so that's something taking consideration and i didn't realize i thought the hardest most expensive part was going to be you know like the down payment closing costs all of that type of stuff when really it's not once you get in there and you're trying to make changes and make it like a home for you um and kind of like yeah get that type of stuff that's what gets expensive we have a 30-year mortgage so it's 
kind of freaky to see like they are title agency whenever we're signing all the documents they gave us like this giant ass pack of papers and it shows like the date um if everything like stays on track as to when we'll have the house completely paid off and it's literally weird to see like 30 years from now like it was like 2052 and i was like what the fuck like that's a long commitment that's kind of scary to think about however it's not like we'll be in this house for that long like i said we're planning to sell in roughly two years um so that's just how long before you pay it off you can then like sell i don't know dude the whole house selling process i haven't done it yet obviously so once i do I kind of know that little inside scoop i'll go ahead and give it to you too um yeah that is kind of the basis i know that kind of went all over the place but i hope that kind of helps you guys understand maybe make the whole process seem a little bit less intimidating it is kind of scary i'm not gonna lie it's stressful however once you're in the home it's so worth it like i love the fact that i can say like i'm a homeowner and not to mention like just the shit i want to do in my house i can't like we literally our bathroom in there completely in like getting renovated right now um well not the shower and toilet but like we took out the vanity and everything basically is gone from there and we're painting it all like swapping out light fixtures like all the things like that we're able to do and i absolutely love that so it's totally worth it um from like the standpoint of having a nice home but also longevity wise if you do it smart um the way that you can it's like an investment thing you know that is kind of that if you guys like these type of videos just like the little sit down kind of chatty kind of like a you know bestie older sister advice type vibe whatever it is go ahead let me know down below that way i can do more of these if you guys are curious more about like the home buying process kind of like tips things that i necessarily like wish like more in depth you know what i wish i would have known before buying this house and all the little details like that um yeah go ahead put any questions you have in the comments below or go ahead and dm me over on instagram i'll put my handle up here on the screen but that is going to conclude this video i love you guys thank you for watching and i will talk to you in the next one